All right, guys, let me put you on some Nuzlocke wisdom, all right? Whenever you're starting a new Nuzlocke, the first Pokemon that you're guaranteed to get is your starter, right? So of course, your starter choice is gonna be very important and it's gonna impact how you play your Nuzlocke very heavily, all right? So today, I'm gonna be telling you guys my opinions on how good each starter is in a Nuzlocke. First of all, if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Go down and subscribe. And uh, yes, mom and dad, they're not actually pierced. These are all fake. Don't discredit me like that. Although it is true that fire starters are rare, water is common, grass types are shit. Although that is true, it's not always true. For starters, um, I, for starters, let's take for instance, Venusaur, Blastoise, there, right? Let's take these three for instance. It's not actually true in my opinion, that whenever you're doing a Nuzlocke with these three, Charizard is the best simply because it's a fire type. I completely disagree. I have had the opportunity to use all of these starters, except for the Gen 8 one, so I can't really put an opinion on those guys. I'll be ranking them in a Nuzlocke sense, both traditional and in a ROM hack, because that's what I had experience with. And in all those cases, I actually don't think Charizard is the best for simply being the fire type. Venusaur, I feel, is a little bit better than Charizard, and Charizard is better than Blastoise. If you guys are playing in a ROM hack setting where, you know, uh, more abilities are unlocked, there's like all the Pokemon have been uh, updated or improved, in many cases, Venusaur is better. But what happens very commonly in ROM hacks is it's very likely you'll get a chlorophyll or thick fat Venusaur and that'll do better than your Charizard or Blastoise. I feel thick fat Venusaur is much better than any of these two regardless of hidden abilities. The ranking I'm not going to keep as A, B, C like this. I'm going to standardize it. So what that means is the best starter will be S tier, the worst starter will be D tier, just so that you guys have an idea of how good they are compared to each other. They might not be S tier, they might not be D tier Pokemon, but it's just so that you guys can have a visual difference. I think the rankings are perfect like, as Venusaur A tier, Charizard B, uh, Blastoise C. Blastoise being in C tier, I don't find it as reliable as a water starter compared to other starters. It's, it's slow and it doesn't actually have that much damage output. You can definitely find much better bulky Pokemon. Charizard, just a very average starter. I can't really say much about it. What about the Fire Dragon Charizard with Levitate and Renplat? That's very, it's very nice that you mentioned that because that is very specifically in Renplat. Now, is it great in Renplat? Absolutely. Renplat is one game out of however many you're gonna be using a Charizard. And the majority of you guys aren't gonna be playing Renplat. You know, you're, maybe you're playing some other ROM hack maybe you're playing a traditional game where you don't get this combination. And in that case, I feel that, you know, Charizard maybe isn't as good as Venusaur. Yeah, I think I'll just go in order of generation. So that would be Meganium, uh, Typhlosion, and Fraligator. Fraligator. Um, Typhlosion and Fraligator. I feel like Fraligator is a little bit better than Typhlosion. Fraligator does get a lot of, uh, very common, very easily usable abilities. Almost all the ROM hacks I've played, I've either gotten Sheer Force, Guts, Intimidate, all very good abilities. I'm really trying to find something to say about Meganium, but there's... I'm really having a hard time. Like, this might be my uh, Vintage White influence since I, I just did two videos on that, but I really don't see the value in a Meganium. Like, it's a grass type, okay, it's bulky, Okay, I feel like Meganium is very traditional in the sense that, yeah, grass types are not that great. The next three, I think I have to place all three of them in A tier. They are all very, very good Pokemon. Even like traditional Nuzlocke or ROM hack Nuzlocke. They're all very good. Sceptile especially deviates a lot from the traditional grass type is bad kind of thing because Sceptile is fast and it has a lot of damage output and it has a pretty wide move pool, especially in ROM hacks. A lot of people clown Blaziken, but I think it's the de facto firefighting type. It's the first, and I think it was done the best. I don't need to say much about Swampert. One weakness makes it a monster. The only issue with Sceptile is that you have to get through Trico and Robo stages, and it doesn't get the 
Hmm. That is true. That is true. I might put it down here then. I've noticed that a lot of games don't keep damp on Swampert, but rather they give it like Swift Swim, Sheer Force, I've seen once. They don't usually keep damp on Swampert. They're not going to do a starter like that. They're not going to do a starter dirty like that. Holion. Why can't? Torterra. Infernape. This one is a little bit more difficult for me to say. Gen 4 was the first generation I played, but I only used Infernape, and Infernape was very, very good. Fast, mixed, offensive. That's a very hard combination to pass up. Empoleon's S tier. That's the thing, right? I don't believe that. I don't think so. It's just a little bit too slow and a little bit too average for me to put it in S tier. It's got a great typing, don't get me wrong. Water Steel, it's only weak to ground, electric, fighting, which are pretty common. It's a little bit too slow, doesn't do enough damage, so I think I'll have to keep it in A tier. If not, move it to B tier. Steel typing does wonders for it defensively. I don't know. I'll keep it in B tier for now. I don't see myself moving it to S tier. Torterra. Now, before you, you tell me I'm like speciesist against turtles, right? Listen to me. Torterra is trying to pull off a bulky grass type kind of thing, and I don't think it does it well enough. Offensively, it's got Earthquake. That's kind of it. And like defensively, it's terrible. Ice, flying, poison, uh, flying, bug. Those are, I, I mean, there's not, there's not, there's nothing else, but like those are very, very common typings. I don't see myself putting it in B tier or higher. It's definitely better than Meganium. <laughs> it's definitely better than Meganium. Surf, Superior, Embor, Samurott. I think. Superior, another one of those situations. It's very similar to, I think Superior is very, very similar to Sceptile. They both commonly get the Dragon typing as a secondary, and uh, moveset is great. It's got Coil, it's got Leaf Blade, Leaf Storm. You could set it up as a mix attacker. Um, but again, you kind of have to get past starter, middle stage kind of dilemma, right? It's not going to do so well in the early game, mid game, so you will have to deal with that. Although, I will have to say, it is very good in ROM hacks because ROM hacks unlock their, their hidden abilities and contrary superior, can't really go wrong with that. I think this is actually definitely high B tier. I'll put in high, I'll put in A tier. I'll put in A tier. I just had too many good experiences with it to not put in A tier. This guy is gonna go here. In all of Pokemon, there's three firefighting types, and I think Embor pulls it off the worst. Fire types tend to be very frail because they do have a lot of common weaknesses. Water, rock, ground. Very, very common. And Embor is bulkier than the other two. It doesn't really make up for the speed loss, though. And, like, it's not that much bulkier. And offensively, it's not that much better either. So I think Embor is C tier. Samurott. One word. It's mid. It's kind of underwhelming. I really don't have anything to say about this because I don't think anybody ever uses it. I'm I'm almost thinking of putting it in, like down here. Like it's just not that good. It's just too average, similar to Meganium, right? Don't get me wrong, guys. All starters are great Pokemon, right? If you're ever offered a starter, more often than not, you are going to accept it. I think these two are the only two situations that you're gonna say you're gonna have a second thing about it and second think about it and say no. They're just too mid. They're too average of Pokemon to be considered good starters. That's my opinion. Feel free to disagree. Delphox, Chestnut, Greninja. Chestnut. Unfortunately, I do think it is underwhelming. It I think it does pull off the no, no, never mind. I was trying to say, like, it, it, it's another, like, style of the bulky, slow Pokemon. I don't think it really pulls it off well. Again, it's very, very average. I, I feel like it does do a little bit better in ROM hacks and in the traditional game, X and Y. In base game, alongside Guaranteed Jellicent, it doesn't stand out. Oh, are you talking about Samurott? 
black, white too. The thing about water types is that they are very common, right? So very more often than not, you're gonna have other water type options if you don't pick it. So yeah, Samrot, I'm sorry. I haven't had much uses with Greninja or Delphox, but if I had to place them somewhere, I'd probably place Delphox um, and maybe Greninja here. If I had to pick an S tier right now, I'd probably put it between Infernape, maybe Blaziken. Probably Blaziken over Infernape, actually. Infernape and Blaziken both do very similar roles in um, their respective games. Even though Infernape is a little bit faster, Blaziken's speed is usually enough to get by, and it's also a little bit bulkier and a little bit more offensive. So I think we're gonna put Blaziken in S- well, it's gonna be contender for S tier over Infernape. Greninja, I think it's A tier. At, like, at, it's at the very least A tier. Greninja does have points for it going towards S tier. I'm not sure right now. I might move it there, but let me see how the rest of the tier list looks. I can see Delphox being an A tier Pokemon, actually. Because Psychic is not a very common type, but it does decent amount of work, right? Fighting types are very common. Poison types are very common on, like, evil teams. I feel like Psychic does do a lot of work for it. It is, it's decently fast, good special attack. I can see this being an A tier Pokemon. One, two, and three. So first fairy type starter. And I'm gonna be honest, I'm sorry, it doesn't really do much for it. I don't think Primarina does well. What's its ability again? Liquid voice, liquid voice. Yeah, no, I don't see it doing that well. Again, a very mid Pokemon. It's not even on the level of these four. I feel like it is down here. Incineroar is very good. I don't know what about it exactly makes it so good, but it's so, so versatile. I don't know, it's not that fast. It's not that offensive. I always see it on rad red teams. I always see it on like final E4 teams. If you think it's move pool, it's got a lot of options and... Right, of course, yeah. Intimidate, very good. Again, ability unlocks in ROM hacks is very important to consider. I'm so sorry. Big move pool, Intimidate. I feel like that is its redeeming factor. All right, speaking of big move pool and Intimidate, this doesn't have either of those, but I still think it's, I'm not sure. It, like, it, it, it does have a pretty wide move pool, actually. So I'll have to give that to him. I, don't, I haven't used Decidueye much, but it does seem like a B tier Pokemon to me. I can't really say much about the Gen 8 starters. I haven't had an opportunity to use them just yet. That's what I feel a lot of people tell me the rankings are, but I'll have to confirm for myself. Okay, now that we've put everything in, I'll, I'll take you guys out for now. Now that we have all the starters in, I feel like I can do a little bit fixing between like the groups. I feel like Incineroar is probably S tier. Intimidate, Wide Move Pool, Dark Type for that Psychic coverage. There's just not many flaws about it, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, you drop for Alligator. You know who I will drop? I kinda see myself dropping maybe Delphox. Put you on the low end, maybe put you up here. It does get Protean, and that's kind of important. Greninja, probably an S tier contender. Delphox, the Psychic type is nice. But I feel like that's the only thing good about it. Like, fire type, okay. I think Delphox does have to go down a little bit. If I'm being honest, I probably have to put uh, Chestnut down here in D tier. It's very, very mid, I'm gonna be honest. There's not much going for it. Other than that though, like, I I'm pretty satisfied with the rest of it. Like, Sceptile maybe can come up here. Yeah, no, Sceptile definitely is definitely an A tier mon. I think that is my final ranking for my starters. Again, this is just my opinion, and based on how I've used them and how they've performed in my Nuzlocke, feel free to drop your opinions down below. But now you can see the distribution of uh, your starters, right? So yeah, yeah, grass types are kind of the worst, unfortunately. Fire types are better on average than the other two. Although not by much. I, I feel like water and fire, those are pretty like interchangeable, but then grass type, probably the worst out of the three. I would love to hear how you guys use your starters because that's a way to learn how to be a better Nuzlocker. I, I'm just stuttering at this point. Like I'm literally just thinking of trying to like, like a, a way to end this thing and I'm just stuttering. So 
subscribe and goodbye.